In section 6.1, we learned how to solve a system of equations using graphing. In section 6.2, we learned how to solve a system of equations using substitution. Now here's the problem with substitution. The problem with substitution is that in substitution, you always need to have one variable with a coefficient of 1, like the x, because then you can move the 2y to the right and solve for x. You can say x equals to 6 minus 2y. But what if we have all equations, like this example, where none of the variables have a coefficient of 1? That leads to a problem. So elimination or linear combination is a way to solve a system of equations no matter what the scenario is, even if you don't have the scenario where you have a variable by itself. So how do we do linear combination? Step number one, write each equation in standard form, which means the x's and y's are on one side and the numbers are on the other side, and we also put them in order from x and y. That's always going to be step one. Step two is choose a variable to eliminate. Now we can usually choose any variable, but sometimes there's one variable that's easier. So sometimes there's one variable that's easier to eliminate. There is one variable that is easier to eliminate. Step three, now here is where like the actual um, work happens because steps one and two are pretty easy. You multiply one or both equations by a constant in order to have the coefficients of the variable chosen in step two be additive inverses. Now what are additive inverses? Additive inverses are two terms that add to zero. Additive inverses are two terms that add to zero. I'll give you an example. Negative 6x and positive 6x are additive inverses because they add to zero. Uh, positive 11x and negative 11x are additive inverses because they add to zero. But if you have like a negative 3x and negative 3x, those are not additive inverses because they don't add to zero. So for additive inverses, we have to have the same coefficient like 6 and 6, but opposite signs like 1 negative and 1 positive. If they're both the same sign, then those are not additive inverses. Then in step four, we add the equations and eliminate the variable. Because we have additive inverses like negative 6 and positive 6 or 11 and negative 11, they're going to add to zero. So we're going to add the equations and eliminate the, uh, the variable in step two. Um, and then we'll, we'll get to step five later. So let's take a look at an example. We have negative 7x plus 7y equal to negative 41. We have negative 5x minus 7y equal to negative 1. So in this case, notice that we have a 7y and negative 7y. Those are already additive inverses because 7y minus 7y, they add to zero. In other words, we have the same coefficient but opposite signs. Now, if you already have that, then that's the variable we're going to choose to eliminate. Because we already have additive inverses, uh, step three is done for us, and we can add these down. So negative nine and negative five, that is a negative 14x. The seven y, negative seven y add to zero. The whole point of elimination, or it's also called linear combination, is to eliminate one variable so that you only have the other variable left over. Negative 41 minus one is negative 42. Now the x is being multiplied by negative 14, so the opposite of that is we're going to divide by negative 14. And if we do that, then a negative divided by negative is a positive, so we get x equals to positive 3. Now we're not quite done yet because we still have to find the y value. So to find the y value, step 5 says substitute the value of the variable found in step 3 into one of the original equations to find the value of the remaining variable. So I can choose either one, first or second, it doesn't matter. If I choose the first equation, I have negative 9x plus 7y equals to negative 41. Um, we're going to replace the x with a 3 because we found out that the value of x is 3. And we want to know if the value of x is 3, then what is the value of y? So negative 9 times 3 is negative 27 plus 7y, and that equals to negative 41. Then we are going to add 27 to both sides. So we're going to do plus 27 plus 27. Um, and then this eliminates the 27s, so we get 7y, um, and that equals to
negative 24. And then if we divide everything by 7, this is going to give you y equal to negative 24 over 7. And the way we, that our, we write our solution, um, we're going to write this as an ordered pair, which means that the value of x is 3 and the value of y is negative 24 over 7. Let's try to make sure I didn't do anything incorrectly here. So the objective here is to make sure that at least one of the variables, like in this case 7 and negative 7, are additive inverses. Let's take a look at example 2. We have 5x plus 2y equal to negative 24. We have 4x minus 4y equal to negative 8. Let's go through the steps one by one. Step 1, these equations are in standard form. The x's and y's are on one side, the numbers are on the other side. So step 1 is done. Step 2 is we choose a variable. So the variable we choose, it could either be the x or it could be the y. Now it says here sometimes there's one variable that's easier to eliminate. So in step two, I could choose the x or I could choose the y. But the y's, notice that two and four, two can turn, be turned into a four very easily. So it, it looks like the y's might be easier to eliminate. So I'm going to choose y as my variable. If I chose x, I could still do it, but I think y is going to be easier. Now the next one, step three, um, it says that we need to multiply one or both of the equations by a constant in order to have additive inverses, which means that we have to have the same coefficient in opposite signs. All right, so because we chose the y, I'm going to be looking at the 2y and the negative 4y. I need them to both be the same. So in order to make the 2 into a 4, I'm going to multiply this top equation by 2. And notice that because we already have a negative and a positive, I only have to multiply by a positive 2. So in step 3, I'm going to multiply equation 1 by a positive 2. So I'm going to get 2 times 5x plus 2y equals to negative 24. The second equation, I don't multiply by anything because... Once I make this 2 into a 4, we already have the same coefficient. So the second equation, I'm going to leave it alone, which is just going to be 4x minus 4y equals to negative 8. If I distribute that 2, uh, and then the other thing is you need to make sure that the 2 multiplies to the negative 24 as well. When you multiply that second equation by 2, both sides get multiplied by 2, the left side and the right side. Not just one, but both sides. So if you prefer... You can write it something like this. You multiply the left side by 2, and you multiply the right side by 2. But both sides have to be multiplied by the 2. So we have, now I'm going to write my new equations. So 2 times 5 is going to be 10x. 2 times 2 is going to be 4y. And negative 24 times 2 is a negative 48. And then we have 4x plus 4y equals to negative 8. Once I have an additive inverse, uh, notice that I have a positive 4y and a negative 4y. We now have additive inverses. Because we have that, we can add these down. So 10 plus 4, this is a 14x. Um, and then the 4y and the negative 4y, they cross out. This is where the elimination takes place. And then I have negative 48 minus 8, that is a negative 56. Now the x is being multiplied by 14, so the opposite of multiplying is dividing. So if I divide both sides by 14, then I get x equals to negative 4. I still have to find the y. So to find the y, I can take my first equation, which is 5x plus 2y equals to negative 24. I replace the x with a negative 4. So I have 5 times negative 4 plus 2y equals to negative 24. That's a negative 20 plus 2y equal to negative 24. And then I add 20 to both sides. And so I have 2y is equal to negative 4. Then we divide both sides by 2, and I get y equal to negative 2. And I always write my answer as an ordered pair in x and a y. 
So my x value is going to be negative 4, and my y value is going to be negative 2. Now, this is if I chose to eliminate the y. I'm going to show you guys the same problem if I choose to eliminate the x. So I have 5x plus 2y equal to negative 24, and I have 4x minus 4y equals to negative 8. Now, instead of the y's, let's say that we focused on the x's. Let's say we chose to eliminate the x's. Remember that we have to get them to be the same number. So it's kind of like finding a common denominator. We have to think about what can 5 and 4 both be turned into. Because in step 3, notice that we need the same coefficient but opposite signs. Right now, the coefficients are not the same. We have a 5 and a 4. Now, 5 and a 4, they can both be turned into a 20. So what we're going to do is we're going to multiply the top equation by 4, and we're going to multiply the bottom equation by 5. But because they're both the same signs, I have to make one of these negative. It doesn't matter which one. Let's say I make the bottom, bottom one negative. So here's what happens. The 4 is going to distribute to all three of these terms. The negative 5 is going to distribute to all three of these terms. And here's what we get. 4 times 5 is going to be 20x. 4 times 2 is going to be 8y. And 4 times negative 24, that's a negative 96. Negative 5 times 4 is a negative 20x. Negative 5 times negative 4. Remember, a negative times a negative is a positive 20y. And then negative 5 times negative 8 is a positive 40. Now, if I add these down, look at what happens. And I, I now have an additive inverse. So these cross out, and I get 28y. Negative 96 plus negative uh, plus 40 is going to be negative 56. If I divide both sides by 28, I end up with y equal to negative 2. And that's the same thing I got in the by doing it the first way. And I'm not going to do the second part where I go back and plug it in for x, but you could do that and you would still get x equal to negative 4. So for elimination, you pick a variable, and you do whatever you have to do to get, get these uh, coefficients to be the same, but the signs to be opposites. The next one we are going to do in class. Let's take a look at the last example. It says a person has 28 coins in his pocket, all of which are dimes and quarters. If the total value of the change is oops if the total value of the of the of the of his change is 475 cents how many dimes and how many quarters does he have so whatever we're looking for those are our variables so let's say x is a number of dimes and y is a number of quarters so here's what we know the person has 28 coins, which means if you take the number of dimes and the number of quarters, it's going to equal to 28. Each dime is 10 cents, so if you take 10, multiply it by the number of dimes. Each quarter is 25 cents, so if you take 25, multiply it by the number of quarters, that gives you 475, because this is how many, um, this is how much total change he has. Okay, now we need to do elimination in this problem. So what I can do is I can choose a variable. So let's say I choose the x's. Now remember that whatever variable I choose, whatever variable I choose, I need that variable to have the same coefficient but different signs. So let's say I choose to go with the x's. I could go with the x's or the y's. Because the second equation has a 10, I need my first equation to have a 10 as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply this entire first equation by 10. But not just 10, because if I just multiply this by 10, then I get one positive and the other one positive. So I have to have a negative 10. That way I can have one positive and one negative. Now if I distribute this, I get a negative 10x. And then a negative 10 times y is going to be a negative 10y. And then a negative 10 times 28 is going to be negative 280. Don't forget to multiply the right side also by negative 10. And then we have a positive 10x and a positive 25y. And that equals to 475. Okay, if I add these down, these cross out. 
negative 10 and 25, that's going to be a positive 15y. Uh, and then on the right side, I have to take 475 uh, and then subtract 280. So let's take 475 minus 280. This gives you 195. And then if I divide both sides by 15, I get y equals to 13. which tells me that y equals to the number of quarters. So this tells me that we have 13 quarters. Now I still have to find the number of dimes. So I can go back to my first equation, which is x plus y equals to 28. And since y is 13, I have x plus 13 equals to 28. I subtract 13 from both sides and I get x equals to 15. So this means I have 15 quarter, uh, 13 quarters and 15 dimes. That's it for this section. There's one example we'll do in class, but please come to class prepared with questions so I can help you with whatever questions you have.